All right, let's do it. CompTIA Security Plus SYO-501. This was the last one of the trifecta of basic CompTIA certifications, at least the first three that I wanted to get. So check it out, for 2019, I set my goal at about, I'd say May, maybe June, to get my A+, Network+, and Security+, Plus by the end of the year. And that goal has been accomplished. I can hardly believe it. And honestly, that's on top of having a three-year-old daughter working full-time, not even in IT, I'm an electrician, and you know, among many other equally important, if not more important, commitments that I have in life. And that just goes to say that if you guys are worried about accomplishing your goals or achieving something in life, you know, as with anything, if you put in the time and you put in the effort, you're going to get the results. And that was my experience with these three exams. So let's get into it. This video is going to be very similar to my Network Plus course. That's just because I used Jason Dion's course for my Network Plus as well. And I seriously loved it so much that I had to use it again for the Security Plus exam. And while I mentioned this in my last video, I'm going to mention it again. Just a quick background on Jason Dion, the instructor for this course. He is a former college professor, lead instructor at Dion, Dion Training Solutions, has multiple information technology professional certifications, including Certified Information Systems Security Professional, the CISSP. He's got Certified Ethical Hacker, Certified Network Defense Architect, Digital Forensics Examiner. He's got a COSA+, Plus, Security+, Plus, Net+, Plus, you know, among many other certifications that are all pretty much security-based, and that's exactly why I went with this instructor it was it was really helpful to have someone that was security focused. Security is what I want to get into when it comes to IT, cybersecurity. So it was good to have somebody that had a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience in that particular um, field. This course on Udemy, if you catch it while it's on sale, you can get it for $10. And I would suggest waiting to see when they're on sale so you can get it for 10 or 12 bucks. Otherwise, you're going to pay 200 and um, while I honestly would say that it's still worth it, guys, save your money. Wait till you catch it on sale. The course includes 15 hours of video lessons. It also includes a printout study guide. This one right here, which I would definitely suggest printing this thing out. So I went to my local FedEx. I'm sure you could go to any copy print store and print one of these out. Um, it's perfect so you can follow along in Jason's video courses while you're going along in this guide, you know, highlighting, taking notes on anything that you find important or anything that he mentions is going to be on the exam. At the end of the course, it also has a practice exam and that practice exam includes the simulations or performance based questions. So it's a lot like the actual exam that you'll be taking. And I just got to put this out there. I see a lot of people posting that clickbait, how to pass my security plus in two weeks or less, one week, four weeks, whatever it may be. While I have nothing against that, I mean, for all I know, they're actually able to retain that information and in two weeks they can get it all down, remember it and be good to go. I just know that for me, two weeks is not enough time to retain and digest an entire course of information. This one took me about two months. Like I said, that includes like fitting it into my schedule with all the other responsibilities that I have. But I think it is a lot more important to get everything down, make sure that you're very knowledgeable of it and know it and that you're familiar with it and you're good with it, as opposed to just getting it in that short term memory and then dumping it out on your exam. I mean, after all, what's the point in passing an exam, getting certified in it if you're going to forget everything that you just learned right after the moment that you're certified anyway? So how exactly did I study for this course? Well. This thing right here is one of my saviors when it came to passing this exam. I would go through this as I was watching the video lessons. This is what it's something that I would do at home. And so I could actually sit down, watch the lessons, get my highlighters ready, my pens ready, and uh, you know, just go through, following along as the videos went over each lesson, I would follow along in this guide, taking notes of anything that I found important or anything that Jason mentioned was important and that I actually needed to memorize. After I would go over these lessons, following along in the notebook, I would, the good thing about Udemy is it has a mobile app, so you can watch it on your phone, and I would really take advantage of that. I would play the audio while I was driving around, and just listen to the lessons that I already went over and went over in the study guide, just trying to take another shot at it. And that was just so I can get a little refresher of, even if I already knew the lesson and I felt confident over the material that we went over it felt good to have it run back once twice maybe even three times and there were even moments when i was going over it for the third time and something just clicked 
that I thought I already knew, but I had a better understanding doing it again. I would do the same thing whenever I was washing the dishes or just one, I would literally fit this into every waking moment of spare time that I had was to go over the video lessons and just get that audio going so I could hear it and get really familiar with it. Flashcards. I wish I had them on me. I can't seem to figure out where I put them, but flashcards was huge for me on this one. I use them for the ports and protocols. So when it comes to flashcards, I would suggest taking them wherever you go. I got, I think, 35 ports and protocols that Jason suggests that you get down on these flashcards and get them memorized. It took me about two days to get all of them memorized, the port, the protocol, and what it actually does. I was kind of surprised that I was able to do it in two days. So I was confident and I continued going through my lessons, didn't even take a second look at those flashcards. And about two weeks later, when I took a second look at those flashcards, I had forgotten all of the ports and protocols. So what I would suggest is taking them wherever you go so you can constantly be looking at them and you get really familiar with them. At this point, I cannot forget all of those ports and protocols that I memorized. They are burned in my brain. I will always know that radius works on 1812 and 1813 and radius alternative is 1645 and 1646 among many other ones like RDP, 3389, FTP, FTPS, SFTP, TFTP, all of them guys. Um, it was really helpful to know this. I can't forget these ports now. What I would recommend though, Jason suggests to memorize 35 different ports and protocols and it's in the video lessons and you'll see that you could even print it out. It's in this, so check it out. But like I said, what I would recommend is taking a look at some of the ports and protocols that are required in the Network Plus objectives. Because for this exam, anything that was from the Network Plus is assumed knowledge and they assume that you know all this already. And I definitely saw that on the exam. Some of the ports and protocols that I saw on the exam were SIP, used for Voice Over Internet Protocol or VoIP. And that's on 5060 and 5061 or RTP real-time protocol, which is also used on VoIP. There were quite a few that weren't on that list that Jason gives of the 35 ports and protocols that you need to memorize, but I did see them on the exam. So definitely take another look at the, uh, at the Network Plus objectives and take a look, maybe even make some flashcards for the ones that it says there. Okay, this is my favorite part of the course. Jason uses a ton of demos to get you really familiar with some of the stuff that you'll actually be using or some of the stuff that you're actually gonna see when you start working out in the field. Some of the things he does are creating a virus using JPS, creating a rat or a remote access trojan, how to conduct your own phishing campaign, configuring firewalls, creating and securing VMs. Now this one was cool, buffer overflow attacks and SQL or SQL injections. And like I said, these are all demos. So he's actually showing you how to do all these things. So let's keep going. Creating a null session, an initialization vector attack on a web protected access point. That one's a lot of fun too. He even has a demo on lock picking and suggests a kit that you can get. I think it was on Amazon on picking locks. Nmap network scanning, how Nessus is used to conduct a vulnerability scan. He talks about John the Ripper and Kane and Abel, the password cracking tools, and actually shows you how to use John the Ripper in Kali Linux in order to find the root password. He goes over monitoring network connections using Netstat, how steganography is used to hide data in a photograph. There's even a demo on how pretexting works as part of a larger social engineering campaign. And there's a lot more than just the ones that I mentioned. Those were just some of my favorite ones. But yes, while you go through the lessons, he has these demos. So all the stuff that you're learning, you can see it in action, how it works and get familiar with it. I loved it. So I definitely recommend purchasing Jason Dion's practice exams and simulations. It's another course. Hopefully you can catch that one for 10 bucks too, or just buy them both at the same time. That one includes six practice exams. Each practice exam includes the simulations or performance based questions. I really liked it because you can get through and get comfortable with taking an exam before you go in to take it for CompTIA, the official exam. And not only that, there were some questions and answers on there that I didn't see on the course itself, but I did see on the exam. So the more content that you get, the more comfortable you get with learning all the different stuff from the Security Plus objectives, the better you're going to be when you take the exam, the more confident you're gonna be when you go in there. So exam day. For me, it was a little nerve wracking. And for some reason, every time I take one of these exams, before I even get through it, I start to tell myself that I have already failed and I get really discouraged. That's the last thing that you can do to yourselves, guys. You really gotta stay focused and just keep getting through it. Remember that CompTIA uses and throws in a few irrelevant questions or questions of a higher level of stuff that aren't even on the objectives in the exams just to not necessarily throw you off, but they wanna see where you stand. They wanna see if you're using brain dumps because some of those brain dumps will include these questions that you're not even supposed to learn in the first place. So if you're answering them correctly in the exam, 
they're gonna say that maybe you were using a brain dump. The problem for people that are actually studying and not using those brain dumps is you see them, you have no idea what they're talking about and you start to get discouraged. And for me, it was like I would go through and I would miss a few of them and then I would just tell myself, okay, well, I, it's only a couple, I still have enough to pass the exam. But once you get like five or six, eight or nine questions straight in a row that you aren't confident with your answers, it's really hard to keep your morale up, but you got to, you got to keep moving forward. The process of elimination is your best friend on exam day. A lot of times there's at least one answer that you can absolutely guarantee like that can't be it. Two of them, you're even better off. If you can just get down to those one or two answers that are just, you can't decide which one, you have, you've already exponentially increased your chances of getting it right. Don't let the frustration get the best of you guys. Just take your best guess and move forward. Get through it. You don't wanna be at the end of the test with a bunch of answers that you've left over. I should also mention that I would definitely suggest to skip the simulations, get through the multiple choice answers, and do them at the end. Those simulations are worth more points, but a lot of times they're a little bit more difficult. So if you can just burn through the multiple choice questions, and even those multiple choice questions will give you a little bit of confidence, a little bit of familiarity when it comes to actually doing the simulation. So that's what I did. I got through all the multiple choice questions, saved the simulations for the very end. One of the simulations I was pretty confused on, but you know, what I, like I said, I just took my best guess. I only know what I know. I only studied what I studied. I can't do any better than the knowledge that I already have. So don't be so hard on yourself, guys. Just try your best. So how about for getting a job? What does the Security Plus do when it comes to HR or applying for places? Does the Security Plus really help your resume when you're trying to get a job? I personally can't answer that question because I don't have experience applying places with my certifications yet. My goal now that I've gotten these three certifications is to get my CCNA and then I'm going to start applying places. Like I said earlier, I'm an electrician so I'm going to be doing a career switch. So I wanted to be pretty prepared before I start jumping into a different career. I have already set a goal for myself. By June 2020, I want to be working at some sort of IT career something related in this field so I can start gaining ex actual hands-on experience with it. Once that goal is reached, I can guarantee you I will be posting a video for you guys of my journey, my experience, going through any tips, tricks that I feel you should know about when it comes to switching careers or just getting that first job in the IT field. I wanna thank you guys for watching. The reason that I do these videos is because when I was studying for my exams and I was even just looking into if I was going to get in IT, what routes I had to take, I would watch all these different blogs, different videos that people were posting on YouTube and I found it so helpful. And now that I have my own experience with some of these exams and some of the routes and different things to do when it comes to getting into IT, I want to share it with you guys because it is really helpful to see someone else's experience with it and see their journey to see where they can go, what route they might take. So if any of my social media posts, my videos or anything that I bring to you guys can help motivate, inspire or just help out one person, you know I consider it a success. So guys, check me out on Instagram. My name on Instagram is Zero Day James. I'm actually very active on there. So if you have any questions, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't include on this video, things that I missed. Hit me up on Instagram, Zero Day James, and we could chat. I've already tried my best to help out some of the people on there with some of the experiences that I've had when it comes to all of this. I will leave links below for the courses that I took, my Instagram, whatever it may be, anything that I mentioned in this video. Guys, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, whatever you gotta do. I again, I thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next videos.